to another episode of Daily Hope. Today we are in Acts chapter 17 and wow, I want to continue the theme of what we were talking about yesterday. Yesterday we were talking about how the kingdom of light, God's kingdom, we are on the offense. Like we're supposed to invade, um, we're supposed to invade Satan's territory and bring the light. Amen. We see that happen here more in, in more of an intellectual sense. Um, but it's really cool, actually. I'm really excited to talk about it. So before we get started today, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell so you, that you're notified every single time we post a video. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, that we would receive your truth today, God. We love you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. So you see some uproars happening here. You see um, Jason, who was protecting um, the Apostle Paul and the disciples, and how they drag him out and they want to kill him. And they're like, these men are the ones. It's it's so cool. This there's two really cool sayings actually in this part. One is they say about the disciples, um, these men are turning the world upside down. Actually, here's the, these who have turned the world upside down <coughs> have come here too. And then also one of their complaints against them is um, was that um, was that that there's only one king, Caesar, and yet these disciples are proclaiming that Jesus is king. So it's really cool. Um, but so we see them. We see Paul and the apostles, or sorry, Paul and the disciples. They're traveling from city to city here, doing great things. But then they get to this place. Um, They get to Athens. Sorry, I was looking because there's so many cities in these couple of chapters, but they get to Athens, Athens, Greece, right? And then here, here's what here's what um Luke says, the writer Luke says. Um in verse 15, sorry, in verse 16, 16. Chapter 17, verse 16. Now, while Paul, Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him when he saw that the city was given over to idols. Wow. Church, we have to, we have to stop being sensitive to Holy Spirit only when we need something. I think, and please hear me, this is not wrong, it's not wrong. But we, but we usually hear like, oh, like I need to, you know, I need to pray in the spirit, I need to get in the spirit, I need to stir myself up in the spirit, I need to, you know, I, I need to feel the spirit, I need to, um, I, I need to, um, um, do this in the spirit like this is like we do things in the spirit for our benefit i'm not saying that's wrong i'm not saying no and and we're called to do that when we read paul's letters like we're called to be sensitive to the holy spirit so does that make sense but this is a different kind of sensitivity to the holy spirit and i think a lot of you have and i think a lot of you can relate to this where you're in a situation and you feel and you feel like, oh man, I should probably pray for this person. Or, oh man, maybe I need to sing some worship songs right now. Or, oh man, maybe I need to just pray in tongues. Or, oh man, maybe I should, maybe I should quote the Bible right now. If you've been a Jesus-loving Christian for any amount of time, you've probably felt this, this, this word provoked. We shouldn't be Christians who are sensitive to the Holy Spirit when it's beneficial to us. But, but being sensitive to the Holy Spirit for it to be beneficial to others, being sensitive to the Holy Spirit to minister to others, we need that church. We need that kind of sensitivity. And here's the thing, in this, in, here's the thing. This isn't hard. This isn't hard at all. You spend enough time with Jesus, listen to me, you spend enough time with Jesus and you will encounter situations where you are provoked to pray, you are provoked to read the Bible, you're provoked to tell someone, hey, Jesus loves you. 
If you spend any if, if, if you spend any amount of time in Jesus, you get filled with who he is, and at some point you will be provoked. And in that moment, you church, you we, we need to do what we feel the Holy Spirit is telling us to do. I'm gonna read this again. While Paul waited for them in Athens, his spirit was provoked within him when he saw that the city was given over to idols. Again, Paul in this city. Listen, this is not Paul's kingdom. This city, but ooh, this city belonged to the idols. The city was given over to idols. So now Paul, in this next in this next portion of scripture, is going to invade this city with the gospel of Christ. That's what he is going to do. And he is going to change the atmosphere, change the culture. He's going to do some amazing things just by preaching this word. Amen. And he's going to proclaim who God is and who Jesus is to these people who haven't even heard of Jesus, who haven't heard of, of, um, of the true God. Amen. So verse 16, now while, Paul, Paul, now while Paul waited for them in Athens, his spirit was provoked within him when he saw that the city was given over to idols. Therefore, he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and with the Gentile worshipers and in the marketplace daily with those who happened to be there. So Paul, we see, okay, Paul is provoked to do something in this city. So Paul goes to the churches and he starts preaching Jesus in the churches. And then, right here, guys, and in the marketplace daily. In the marketplace daily. He would just go out to the marketplace, start preaching Jesus, probably doing miracles, because sci these signs follow those who believe. He started doing what, what, what they told Jason in, in this earlier portion of Scripture. is like, man these men are turning our world upside down. What's he doing? He's turning this city that's given over to idols. He's turning it upside down. And he and 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 he he does it so much that people actually start to come to him and say, "Hey, what is this that you're talking about? We want to hear what you're talking about." And so an opportunity is given to Paul to preach the gospel to a ton of people here. But I want to go back, church. Paul was provoked when he saw that the city was given over to idols. We need to be a people, church, that are provoked when we see false doctrine being taught in schools, when we see, when we see family members doing something that we know is wrong, when we see our friends doing something that we know is wrong, when we see someone um, in, 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 the, in the marketplace, at, at, at the store, and we just know, man, I, they don't know Jesus. The Holy Spirit will provoke us and say, "It's time to invade. It's time to it's time to it's time to invade this school, this marketplace, this family member. Start to invade them with the light of Christ. Start to invade them with with um with the gospel, with signs, wonders, and miracles. Church, we are called to be on the offense. Amen. Amen. Let's pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord. Encourage us." Let us be encouraged, Lord, to, to be disciples like the Church of Acts, God, where we're not on the defense, but we are on the offensive, Lord. And let me pray a bold prayer, God, that you would begin to provoke us. You would, be, you would begin to provoke us, Lord, so that the kingdom of light will shine and eliminate and destroy the kingdom of darkness. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. That concludes today's Daily Hope. In our description box, there's a couple of links. One is if you guys want to become a generous giver to Daily Hope. Thank you guys so much for that. Also, our reading plan is there, so you can follow along as we go through uh, the book, <coughs> book of Acts. Excuse me. And then lastly, I want to know, what was your takeaway? What did you get out of this chapter? It's such a good chapter. There's a lot of things that happen, um, from Jason to um, Paul preaching, um, Yes, it's a great chapter. So I want to know what were your takeaways or where the Holy Spirit speak to you. Put that in the comment section. Amen. 
And then lastly, at Hope Community, people are our heart. Generosity is our opportunity. Excellence is our spirit. Smiling is our favorites. And Jesus is our Lord. We'll see you tomorrow for Acts chapter 18.